So here is the website that we're going to be building step by step with no step skipped. This is going to be built in WordPress so it's super professional and this tutorial is for complete beginners so no HTML, no coding, no PHP, CSS, no technical jargon, none of that. So as you can see we have our logo right up here, our menu, and this big featured image. We have our testimonials and people we've worked with. So this is our, under our recent work. So this website is good for anyone who has a portfolio or anyone who needs to show off their work or uh, maybe they have a gym and they want to show different things. Uh, anything that needs a photo gallery, really good for that. Maybe an artist. Um, so what we can do here is we can uh, click on testimonials or who we've worked with and we can see that uh, the different images come up depending on what we click on so if we just want to look at testimonials we can click it and it looks really 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 good so we can actually click on these different things and it slides up and you can give more information right here and we put in a little button so if people can contact us uh, we can also click on who we've worked with so Robert has worked with uh, Sir Elton John and uh, Bob Dylan's piano so that's pretty cool um, we can get more information about that so that's pretty awesome and you can just click this slider button so this is a really cool website especially if you need a portfolio or photo gallery uh, or any of your work needs to be seen which I really do recommend all right so uh, once we do that we have our logo in different tabs up here and uh, as you can see this is the same thing that was on our home page but we have more tabs I mean more different uh, galleries and we again we can click on who we work with or testimonials and it shows up so it's really cool you can give a little information right here and you can click on it and you can learn more same as the front page all right then we have our services so we have our image here of the piano because uh, Robert does uh, piano services he does tuning repair refinishing case design this can be any of your services or uh, it could be any other page that you want so we have an about me and uh, this is uh, just a really clean, simple about me page with his image in right there. And we have Bob's stories. So what this is, is it's a blog telling um, about different stories of Bob's. He's uh, worked with Stein, Steinway and Sons, and he has a recommendation letter on them. And uh, so this is just different blog entries. So you can use this for any sort of blog that you want to do working with Elton John. I mean, that's a pretty interesting uh, blog post there. You can click and you can learn more or read more. And people can also comment if they want on the blog. They can say, oh my god, that, that was amazing. Um, then we have a contact page. So if anyone wants to get uh, in touch with Bob and uh, wants to use his services, they can call, they can uh, email they can fill out the form and we also have his service area Bob is up in Canada so we want to put in his service area so that people from uh, New York aren't uh, calling him but maybe he would fly out if it was a big enough person I'm sure he would all right so that is the website again it is for beginners um, but it, it's a very professional website we're using the same technology as uh, CNN, Forbes, Jay-Z, Katy Perry, um, but no coding or HTML or confusing technical jargon required. Um, and yeah, this is a really cool, amazing website, especially if you need some, some sort of uh, portfolio or gallery, because you have these different options of showing these different things, which is really cool, I think. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so we know where we're going and where we're headed. Let's get a little plan to see how we're going to accomplish everything. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a website name. That's like 
www.yourwebsite.com or www.yourbusiness.com. You could also use a .net, .org, .info, things like that. But the most popular is to get a .com. Unless you're in the UK, then you get a .co.uk, something like that. All right, so your website name is about $13 per year. $13. Let me make this a little wider. Per year. And that is a yearly cost. Um, and then after you get your website name, you need hosting for it to work. So hosting is a computer that's on 24 hours a day that holds all of your information. So if you had a website name but no hosting, your website would just come up blank and nothing would show. So there needs to be a place where you hold all these logos and images and, and text and everything. And that's hosting. That's a computer that's on 24 hours a day that holds all of your information. So hosting is about $10 per month. So $10 per month for uh, hosting, $13 per year for your website name. All right, then we're gonna install WordPress after we get a website name and hosting. We're gonna install WordPress, and that is free from the good people over at WordPress. It's pretty awesome. Then we're gonna install a theme. Now, a theme is the design of your website, so what your website looks like. And uh, there are free themes, but this particular theme is a premium theme and it costs $40, and that's a one-time fee. You don't need to pay that yearly. You own it uh, for the rest of your life, and you get updates and all of that. So that's going to be $40, or, or you can install a free one. So whatever one you want, I uh, recommend installing a premium theme, but if you're on a budget, then uh, definitely do the free version. After that, we're going to put on content, and this is all of... Uh, Robert's content here so we didn't use any stock images or anything so that was also free so in total it's gonna be about uh, let's see what is that 23 63 dollars in total to start so 63 to start to start but definitely um, if you don't want to do the $40 for the premium theme then it can be uh, $40 less which is $23. So $23 is uh, the required payment, and I'll show you how to get 35% uh, off that. So it's going to be under $20 to start. Under $20 to start. Uh, definitely, if you want to go with a more premium version, it's going to be about $60 to start. $20 to $60. To $60. All right. So let's uh, begin. So the first thing we need to do is get our website name and hosting, and luckily we can do that in the same place, and that is HostGator.com. So let's go do that. We go to www.HostGator, HostGator, H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R.com. All right, once you're at HostGator.com, and remember HostGator is where you're going to get your website name and hosting from, uh, once you're on here, you're going to want to click on web hosting. And uh, there are many different hosting companies to choose from, but this tutorial is based on HostGator. I really like them. I think they're great. They have free live chat, just in case you don't want to call or email, which is really helpful. Uh, and I think that they're the best, but obviously you can choose your own hosting company. There are thousands and thousands of hosting companies, uh, but I like HostGator the best. All right, so with that said, there are once you click on web hosting, there are different uh, packages. We have the hatchling plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. We don't need the business plan right now. Um, I either recommend the hatchling plan or the baby plan. If, you're, if you know that you're going to have a bunch of websites, uh, for example, you're going to have yourwebsite.com, yourfriendswebsite.com, uh, your mom's website.com um, you only need to buy you should buy the baby plan because then you can have unlimited domains it's called so unlimited website names 
if uh, you know you're only going to have one website name, then I would choose the hatching plan. I have the baby plan, so that's what I'm going to recommend here. And um, it has different prices, so if you sign up for longer, you get more of a discount. It's not that great of a discount, so I just go with monthly. Even though I've been with them for a really long time, I could save a little money if I went for a year or two years or three years. But I just like to go monthly, so that's what I'm going to recommend for you to do. So we're going to choose baby plan or the hatchling plan, and let's go with monthly. All right, once we do that, we can click order now. And once we're here, we need to choose what our domain or website name is called. So I'm just going to paste in Robert's uh, website name in here. And you can choose from .com, .net, .org, .info, or .biz. If you need more options than this, then you can uh, say, I already own this domain name. And you can get it from somewhere like GoDaddy. Or if you already have a domain name from GoDaddy, you can just say, I already have uh, this domain and put it in here. But since we're registering a new website, I'm going to click register a new domain. And uh, I'm going to stay with .com, but obviously if your name's not available on .com, you can go with .net, .org, .info, or .biz. So I'm going to go with .com, and I'm not going to uh, enter in, check off any of these, because I don't really think it's necessary to get the, you know, I only think it's necessary to have one website. You don't need the .net, .org, .info, .biz. I mean... Maybe if you're Microsoft or someone, you would, but uh, I don't think it's necessary. You can save money by not getting it. All right, then it has our baby package. Uh, so this is going to say either baby or hatchling for you and 20% off. I'm going to show you how to get 35% uh, off. So that's just in a second. Then it says uh, choose your account information. I'm just going to put Tyler and security pin. You could just put uh, something that's easy to remember. And then you're going to fill out your billing information, and if you're from another country, you can pay via PayPal, um, or you can pay uh, through credit card. All right, and now we have hosting add-ons. So we have domain privacy protection. Um, what this does is anytime you register a website name, for example, yourwebsite.com, uh, your phone number and emails get stored into a database that people can look up um, and they can you know basically see your address and your uh, phone number and things like that I trust people uh, so I don't really uh, use domain privacy protection but that's really up to you so it's nine ninety five a year I'm just gonna uncheck it because um, I don't think it's necessary but maybe for your type of business it would be so you can uncheck that and then add site locks. This just adds an extra layer of security to your website. <clears throat> I don't think it's necessary. There are WordPress security plugins, but again, that's up to you. So I'm gonna uncheck that. And then coupon code, it says uh, summer. You can actually save more money. It, this, this saves you 20%, uh, but if you type in 35 and you press validate, you'll see that you can save 35%. So that's really cool. All right, and so once you've done all of that, uh, and also I get credit for this, um, so it helps me continue to make these free tutorials, so I really appreciate uh, that you guys put in uh, my coupon code. All right, so once you do that, you want to review the uh, account information. So we have... Uh, live chat, email support, um, which I really like the live chat. That's one of the best things about HostGator. Uh, we have account activation, money back guarantee, 45 days, hosting, baby, so this would say baby or hatchling, uh, one month package, uh, 9.95, 35% off, and your domain name. So it all comes out to less than $25. So it comes out to $21.47. So that's a really good deal considering that you're making a website that's worth thousands and thousands of dollars, in my opinion. So once you do that, you can check this box. I have read and agreed to the terms and service, of, terms and conditions of use, and press create account.
All right, once you do that, you're gonna get a thank you page and now you can go ahead and check your email. All right, so now we're in our email and uh, HostGator has sent us uh, our account information. Go ahead and click on the HostGator Your Account Info and you should see an email that looks like this. It has really important information, so make sure that you keep it safe. It has all your usernames and passwords and everything like that. Um, so let's just look at our progress on our uh, to-do list. So we got our website, so that's done. We got our hosting, that's done. We're flying through these things. And the next thing we need to do is install WordPress. So uh, that's what we're gonna do next, and that's pretty easy. So we have all of our account information, again, right here. And what we really need from this is our uh, control panel, our username, and our password and of course our website. So when you see the your control panel link, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click on that link. That's gonna open you up to uh, another page and what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy our username. So just copy it, highlight it, and uh, right click and copy it and paste it into here and we can go and copy our password. And again, this works on a Mac and PC because everything is web-based, so it's pretty cool. So paste in our password and then go ahead and click Login. All right, now that you're logged in, it's time to go ahead and install WordPress. And the way we do that is we uh, log in here like we just did and scroll down and we go all the way to software slash services and we find quick install and go ahead and click on quick install. And on the left right here, it's gonna say WordPress. Go ahead and go click on that and press continue. All right, now it's gonna ask you uh, what website you wanna install it on. If you have a whole bunch of websites here, you'll have to choose you probably only have one, so uh, just the main website and make sure this is blank because you don't want to install it on yourwebsite.com slash something. You want to install on your main website. All right, and you can enable auto upgrades, put in your admin email here. I'm just going to put in my email. Uh, and then our admin user, I'm going to put in Bob. And your first and last name, we'll keep it mine, but we can change it later. And for the blog title, we could put piano services, but we can change that later too. Once we do that, we can click install now. And now we wait. All right, now that it's installed, it says congratulations, your installation is ready. You can access it now by going here, which takes you to your website. Uh, because we've gotten uh, hosting this soon, like we just got hosting and now we're just installing uh, the website, it's not gonna work. So it's not gonna work for another three hours. So we have to wait until uh, it works for three hours. So. I'm gonna take a little break right now, and uh, when I come back in a few hours, I'm gonna see if it works. So I'm gonna take a break right now, and in a couple hours, we're gonna check on it. So I will talk to you soon. All right, so I'm back from my break, and uh, I forgot to mention that you need to write down or print out your username and password. This does usually get uh, emailed to you. So if you close the window or something, then it's probably in your email inbox but um, just make sure you write this down or print it out or remember it somehow. All right, and so once that happens, we can now click here to see if our website is working. And it is, and we have the default WordPress installation. So this is all just uh, default information, and we have our sample page and all of this stuff right here. Some web developers charge as much as $500 just to set this up right here, which I think is ridiculous. 
All right, but we don't want to keep it uh, default like this because it's not very impressive. So we want to log into the back end of WordPress. Um, so the way we do that is we go to yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin. So yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin. And then you press enter. And it's going to ask you to log in. So uh, here is your username and password. So I'm just going to copy in Bob and his password. And I'm going to paste it right in there and I'm going to click log in. All right, so now we are logged in and uh, we can close after we print out and remember this uh, information, we can close this quick install window. And the first thing I like to do is change my password because I can't remember that crazy long password. So what I'm going to do is click on users and click on uh, your username. And then I'm going to uh, scroll all the way down. It says new password. And I'm just going to enter in a new password here twice. And I'm going to click update profile. All right, so now that's updated. And uh, we have our new password. Now we can always use Bob as a, as a username and our new password. Uh, the next things that uh, I'm going to do is just make sure that we're all on the same page. So uh, most of you will either not need to do these things or it will already be set in place. But just to make sure everyone's on the same page, we need to do a few checks, preliminary checks, before we, uh, before we start building a website. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure caching is off. And what caching does is it helps speed up your website, but sometimes you don't see the changes that you're doing. So on your homepage, let's say you uh, write something new, you keep on clicking refresh, that's because you have caching enabled. So it speeds up your website, but it, it makes uh, your website not show changes immediately. So the way we do that is we can go to settings, WP super cache, Click on the Easy tab right here, and click this to turn off caching. Caching off, click Update Status. Now you don't need to know exactly what's going on here. It's just to make sure everyone's on the same page. All right, sometimes that doesn't uh, take care of the problem completely, so we want to go to Plugins, and it's very rare that it doesn't, but one out of 100, um, so I just want to make sure no one gets frustrated. So you go to plugins and press deactivate to this WP super cache uh, plugin. And I'll explain about plugins later. And we can delete WP super cache. All right, you can reinstall it later. You're not losing anything. It's a free plugin, so. So then click yes, delete these files and data. All right, so that's the first check to make sure everyone's on the same page. The second one is uh, to make sure our links are search engine friendly. So we go to settings and permalinks. And just make sure it's, a, it's on post name. And the reason we do this is because we don't want numbers in our links like we have here. We want it to say, if it's uh, your about page, we want it to say yourwebsite.com slash about, not yourwebsite.com slash p equals one, two, three. So that's much better for search engines and that's much better for people also. So make sure it says it's on post name and click save changes. All right, and now we'll go back to our dashboard and this is called the dashboard right here. And this is where you can change all of the settings for your WordPress website. So this is where everything happens as an administrator to your website. So we are doing great. We just installed WordPress. The next thing we have to do is install a theme. Now, if you want to get a free theme, you can go over to Appearance, Themes, 
install themes and you can see the featured themes and all of these will be free right here if you want to install a theme just click install now and click activate now if we go to our home page we will see there is a difference in the way that our website looks but for this uh, video we're gonna do a premium theme and this costs about forty dollars again but we have to go to a third-party website and that website is called themeforest.net so once you get here just go ahead and go over to the search bar right here and type in Delta I'm also gonna leave a link in the description to this theme um, so just uh, click the link in the description so once you get here what you want to do is click purchase and uh, you might have to sign up if you're not already signed up to the theme forest website and then just purchase it and then uh, download it so I've already purchased it so I'm just gonna go over to my user uh, profile click downloads and re-download this theme I will download the installable WordPress file only and I'm just gonna drag this onto my desktop so we can close up theme for us now and now we have to install this theme so to install a third-party theme from another website just go ahead and head over to install themes under appearance themes and click upload and then what you want to do is click choose files and then click the theme forest file that you just downloaded so I'm just gonna click this click open install now and just like we did before I'm gonna click activate and uh, we will have uh, our new theme activated so this is what it looks like by default uh, what we have to do is install another plugin that this theme uh, recommends so it'll say this theme recommends the following plugin and what we have to do is just click begin installing plugin and then click install under gallery meta box so now we can return to the uh, dashboard and um, our new theme is totally installed oops we have not activated the plugin so it says uh, that we need to activate it now so I'm gonna do that so let's find our gallery meta box and I'm gonna click activate so now that box has disappeared and our new theme is ready to go so let's check this off the list now we what we have to do is put our content on so that's gonna be um, our pages like an about page and a contact page and our home page which is gonna have a big image and some uh, testimonials and recent work so let's get started on that right now so the first thing to do is to start adding our pages and again those pages are gonna show up right up here it's gonna say our work and testimonials services about me and it's gonna be in this menu right up here so let's just add some blank pages to our menu uh, to do that we have to first add our pages by going to pages add new and I'm gonna give uh, the pages the titles that I want to show up on our menu so the first one is going to be called our work and testimonials and I'm gonna leave this blank for now we're gonna add our content uh, later so I'm gonna publish that and now I'm gonna add another page by clicking add new next to edit page so add new and the second one is going to be called uh, services so once this loads up I'm just gonna type in services in the title and click publish
After that, I'm going to click Add New again. The third one is going to be an About Me page, so I'm just going to type in About Me. Publish that. And add another, which is going to be Bob's Stories. Publish that. And the final page is going to be the contact page. So it's going to say contact, and I'm going to publish that. <clears throat> so now let's check out our website and see if anything was changed. You'll notice nothing has changed because now that we've created our pages, we have to put those pages up in our menu. So let's do that now by going over to appearance and right here and clicking menus. And what you want to do is just click create a new menu right up here. And then let's give our new menu a name and I'll call this main menu. Click create. And it really doesn't matter what you call your menu, it's just the name. And then what you want to do is select all of the pages that you would like to show up in your menu. So I'm going to select the contact page, Bob stories about me services, and our work and these are all the pages that I just created and I'm going to click add to menu then you'll see them show up over here and we can rearrange the order of these so I want this first and this second and this third and contact last so I'm just gonna rearrange by dragging and dropping and then what you want to do is under menu settings right here you'll see theme locations and we'll set it to main. So this tells the theme that this is the main menu. So let's click save. And once that has saved, we can check out our website. And now we will have a menu right up here with all of our pages. And if we click on any of these pages, will be brought to a blank about me page or blank contact page because we haven't actually added any content to these pages yet. But we're all set up to do that so let's do that now and let's start off with a really easy page and that's going to be the about me page. So as you saw in the uh, uh, site demo all the about me page is going to be is a picture of Bob over here on the left hand side and then some text telling about him. So let's do that now and let's edit our About Me page. So let's go over to our dashboard. Let's go to Pages. And let's click Edit under About Me. And then what I'm going to do is just type in or paste in some of this text that Bob has sent me. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in. And all this is is just regular old text. And now what I want to do is... Uh, well, actually, let's see what that looks like. Let's click Update. And let's go to our website. And let's go to the About Me page. And we'll see that it looks pretty good. The only problem is it has this little sidebar that says Recent Posts and Recent Comments. And it has a Leave a Reply box. And I don't want any of this. So let's get rid of that. So to get rid of the sidebars, what we have to do is go over to the page attributes tab right here and under template let's click full width template and this will make it so that the text is the full width of the website and if we refresh that after clicking update right here we'll see that the text goes all the way across next up I want to get rid of this re, uh, leave a reply comment box so I am going to go over to the screen options tab right here uh, check off discussion and then a new tab will show up down here and it'll say discussion and then what you want to do is uncheck allow comments and uncheck allow trackbacks then click edit up uh, excuse me then click update and now that will get rid of the comment box and the next thing that I want to do is add an image, a uh, picture of Bob over here on the left hand side. And I want the text to kind of wrap around the image so that the image and the text 
uh, kind of sit on the same line horizontally. So I'll show you what I mean by that. And to do that, we're going to go back to our About Me edit page. And I'm going to take my cursor and put it at the very beginning before the first uh, letter of my About Me page. Then I'm going to click Add Media and select files and I'm gonna upload a file off my desktop and it's gonna be a picture of Bob so I'm just gonna click the picture that I want and click open and what I want to do is change some of the attachment display settings I want the alignment to be left and this will make it so the text uh, or so the image will be on the same line as the text horizontally and I'm going to set the link to to none because when you click the image I don't want it to link to anything and then uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to set this image in particular to full size it really depends on how big you want your image you can make it a thumbnail uh, or a medium sized image if you have a larger image but I'm going to make mine around 201 by 300 pixels so alignment left, link to none, size uh, really depends. So I'm going to insert that into my page. Then you'll see the picture show up right here on the left hand side. And if we click update, we're going to make that live on our website. So if we refresh it, we'll see now that we have a nice picture of Bob right there with some of this about me text. So that completes our About Me page. Uh, the next page we need to do is the next easiest one, and that is the Services page. So we can just click on Services, and up here we can click Edit Page. So that's an easier way of editing uh, the Services page. So just click Edit Page. And the first uh, thing that we're going to do again is make this full width. So go to Template and Full Width and click update and we can go ahead and see what that looks like if you press view page you'll see that there's no sidebar here so that's pretty good but now we're gonna uh, remove comments because we don't want people commenting on the service page so go ahead and click edit page again and uh, make sure up here again uh, discussion is checked we've already done this uh, and Uncheck allow comments and allow trackbacks and press update. And what that's going to do when you view page, it's going to obviously remove comments. And now we have a blank services page. We have a blank canvas to uh, design. All right. So once we do that, uh, we now can edit page again, but we need a plugin. And what a plugin does it, it extends the functionality of WordPress so by default WordPress for example doesn't have like a contact form a photo gallery um, and just different things and so plugins allow people to build additional functionality for WordPress so what we're actually going to do is we're going to get a columns plugin so that uh, because usually it's hard to write information on this side and information on uh, this side so to get both uh, sides of information it's usually difficult but if we download a columns plugin then uh, we can put information here and here and here and here so I'll show you what that uh, means in just a second so the way we do that is we click on plugins and you can just leave page so we click on plugins and we click add new and then we uh, type out columns, so C-O-L-C-O-L-U-M-N-S, columns, and click search plugins. All right, so these are different uh, plugins that you can use. Uh, this is the columns plugin, and what I like to do when reviewing plugins is look at the ratings, make sure they're good. Maybe click details to see how it works. So this shows you how it works. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code right here. And I'm also going to click Install Now. And then I'm going to click Activate Plugin. 
All right, so it doesn't look like anything has changed, but now we can use the, the columns code to format our pages. So just go ahead and click pages again and go to services and then click uh, text up here because we're pasting in some code and just paste in uh, that code and we're actually going to copy it again because we want um, another column group and let's go back to visual and let's see what that looks like on our um, website so let's click update and now we can view page so as you can see we have information uh, in one column a uh, second column and then another uh, third and fourth column so that makes the layout of the page uh, much, much cooler. So we're not done yet. We actually need to put in some good information here. So go ahead and press edit page. And what we're going to do is uh, we have some text already copied, uh, already made. So we're just going to copy it and we're going to paste it right in here. All right, and you may need to hold shift and enter just so it doesn't make too many spaces. So you just press backspace and then shift and uh, enter, and then it won't make uh, a bunch of extra spaces. All right, so we're gonna uh, keep on doing that. So that was for tuning, and now we can do it for repair. And we need to backspace a little bit so there's not too many uh, spaces, not too many spaces. Sorry, I blanked out there for a second. Um, and then just uh, we just keep on doing it. So bear with me. This is a step by step uh, tutorial with no steps skipped. So that's what we're that's what we're gonna do. All right. So we have refinishing. And again, what I'm doing is I'm holding, uh, when I, I backspace first, then I hold shift and enter. That makes a, uh, just the next line. It doesn't make it a really big next line. All right, and we'll do um, case design here. And we will paste that in. And we'll backspace. So there's no additional spaces. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's actually see what it looks like on the website because you never know. And we'll go to view page and it's looking pretty good, but obviously there's uh, no space in between these things, which is uh, doesn't look right. So let's go ahead and edit page. All right, so to get our page looking right, uh, let's go ahead and add some more spaces after this uh, slash column group. So what we're going to do is we're going to press enter and we're going to uh, make a space and press enter again and make another space. These spaces, even though they're invisible, uh, they're like placeholders. So we're going to click update and we're going to view our page and we're going to see that that uh, added spaces in between right here. So that's pretty cool. Now what we need to do is uh, make these bolder, this tuning and repair and this refinishing and case design. Let's make it a little bigger, more like a title or a heading. So let's go to edit page. And what we're gonna do here is we're actually going to uh, do a little bit of code, but don't be afraid, it's just a little HTML code and it's really not difficult at all. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on this text uh, tab right up here. And then we're gonna um, make, before this tuning, we're gonna make it uh, less than, and then type H3 and a greater than sign. And then at the end of the tuning, we're gonna do a less than, a forward slash H3 and a greater than sign. So H3 means heading three. 
Uh, heading 1 is the biggest, heading 2 is a little smaller, and heading 3 is even smaller. So uh, this begins the heading 3 and this ends it. And whatever's in the middle, it applies to it. So very easy stuff. Uh, it's called HTML and you can learn all about it online. Alright, so that was for tuning. What we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing for repair. So less than H3, greater than, and then at the end of the repair, less than forward slash H3, greater than. So that all the ending tags, that these are called tags, the ending tags always have a forward slash H3. Alright, so let's do that for refinishing. We'll do less than H3, greater than, and at the end of refinishing, less than forward slash h3 greater than. All right, in case design, we'll do it one more time, less than h3 greater than, and then at the end of case design, less than forward slash h3 greater than. So pretty easy stuff. Let's go back to visual, make sure uh, it looks right, and it does, so that's good. Now let's click update. All right, then we can view page. All right, so now each of our uh, services is bolded up here, and that looks much better, but I think I put too much space in between here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and edit page. And we see, remember one of these invisible spaces right here? Let's just go ahead and press backspace and press update, and we'll see if that helps. So now we can go, that might be too little, but let's see. Oh, and that looks actually pretty, pretty good. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, so our, the, our services look pretty good, but this page needs a little bit of something, and I think we should put an image up here, maybe of a piano or something. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we can go ahead and press edit page right here. And we're going to set featured image. So that's going to set us an image of a piano at the top. So let's set featured image. And let's press upload files because we're uploading it from our computer. And then click select files. All right. Uh, now we have this uh, image right here called services.jpg. And that is um, a picture of a piano. So we're going to press open. And we're going to set featured image. So this image is very, uh, not very tall, but very wide. And that's the exact sort of image we need. If our image is too tall, it's not going to look right on the page. But what we can do is we can edit image and crop the images. So that's pretty easy. But since we don't need to do it, um, uh, our image is pretty good. So we're just going to press set featured image. And then we're going to click update. All right, now we can view our page. And we can see that now it looks much more polished off and it looks much, much better. And this is looking like a pretty good page. So I'm going to go back to our home page. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is set up our gallery of our work and testimonials. So we're going to set up the portfolio. So we can go ahead and click on it. And we'll see that this is set up like the default page. What we need to do is set it up as the portfolio page. <clears throat> so the way we do that is we can go ahead and click on edit page right here. And under template, instead of default template, template is the way that the page is laid out. We're actually going to choose portfolio dash Ajax. And what Ajax does is it gives that cool effect that when you click on it, uh, they appear and I'll show you uh, what that looks like in a second. So once you do that you just press update and now we can view our page and as we can see our page is blank uh, that's because we have no portfolio items so now we're just gonna add in some portfolio items so what we can do is go to our dashboard and by the way this bar is only here when you're logged in so when you log out, uh, it disappears. I'm sure you already know that, but let's go to dashboard. 
and click on portfolio. And as we can see, we have no portfolio items. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add new. And we could just start adding uh, portfolio items. So the first portfolio item is going to be, I'm just gonna paste it in there, Sir Elton John recording session. And I'm gonna add in some dummy text. So it's just some random uh, gibberish text. So I'm gonna paste that in there and maybe I'll make it uh, this one so it's like a quote. So we can just highlight it and press the block quote. So that looks like a quote, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> and the next thing we wanna do is set featured image. So uh, we'll set the featured image for this portfolio item. And I'm gonna upload the files. So I'm gonna click on this right here and I'm gonna select files. So I just need to find Sir Elton John recording session, press open, and set featured image. All right, so this will all make sense when I show you a little more, but after we do that, we're just gonna click publish. And now we can go back to our page and click on our work and testimonials and we see a new uh, portfolio item. So what we can do is we can click on it and it will come up in that block quote like I showed you. Now, sometimes uh, this won't show up and you'll be clicking on it and you'll be trying to make it work and it just will be blank for some odd reason. What you can do is you can go to appearance uh, I'm sorry, you can go to settings and then permalinks and just press save changes. So if it doesn't work for you, that's all you have to do and you can go back and it'll work again. All right, well, I still wanna uh, maybe tidy some of this up a little bit. I think what I wanna do here is maybe add in a button and maybe for this uh, page in general, I want to add different categories. So maybe one can say uh, who we worked with and another one can say uh, testimonials so that we can click on it and we can only see the portfolio items for either testimonials or who we work with. So let's uh, do those two things first. First, let's add a new, uh, let's put a button right here so that if people want to contact us, they can just click it and it'll go right to the contact page. So let's see how to do that. The way we do that is we click on our portfolio item and right down here, we're gonna do a little code. So it's gonna be uh, the left bracket button, B-U-T-T-O-N space URL and then equals and just put in a double quote and slash contact. End the double quote and then uh, do a right uh, bracket. And then you can spell out contact us or whatever you want your button to say. And then do a left bracket forward slash button. So again, this is like HTML, but it's called a short code. And it only works for this sort of theme. You can also get plugins that do this sort of thing. But uh, yeah, so everything, uh, this is becomes a button and this is the code in order to create the button. So this is the beginning of it, this is the ending of it. Let's see what that looks like if we update it and see if we did it right. All right, so we updated it and we can go back to our website and press refresh and click on our portfolio item and see that there is a contact us button. So that's pretty cool. Uh, if we click on it, it goes to our contact page. All right, so that's pretty cool. Now what we can do is go back to our, our work and testimonials page. And now we want to add different categories. So this would be under uh, who we worked with, uh, this one. So let's actually categorize it so that people can click on different buttons and we can see uh, different portfolio items based on which uh, category you want to view. So let's go here and uh, over here it says portfolio categories. You just add new portfolio category right here. 
So just add new. And this is gonna be called who we have worked with. So we're gonna add new portfolio category. And we're also gonna have testimonials, but that's not in this one. But we'll just uh, spell it out. Testimonials, okay. And we will add portfolio. All right, so we're gonna uncheck testimonials and keep it checked who we've worked with and press update. Now when we view our page, it's gonna give us the option of who we've worked with um, or testimonials, but we haven't added any testimonials, so it hides it. All right, so now that's, uh, we're gonna keep on doing the same thing and we're gonna add a whole bunch of different portfolio items. So we're just gonna do this a whole bunch more times so that we can fill this whole page with different portfolio items. So let's go ahead and do that. Up here, we're just gonna click add new and I'm gonna do this a little quicker because we've already done it once. So this one's gonna be uh, two, hand, two pianos, four hands. We're gonna set feature item. Uh, we're gonna upload and select files and we're gonna find two pianos, four hands, and we are going to set featured image. And this is actually under testimonials, so we'll check that one off. And we'll press publish. Now we can also go ahead and get this dummy text from here. Uh, let's, sorry. Let's go to uh, this one and get the dummy text and just copy it and paste it over to our other portfolio. So here, and paste it in there, update. And now if we look at our portfolio, we will see that there are two things and once we click on this, it gives that cool effect of showing or disappearing. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's add some more portfolio items. We'll just click add new again. And we'll say this one is that. And we will, whoops, we will set featured image. And we will uh, upload files and select find it, press open, and set featured image. And we can paste in that dummy content again. So uh, this one is who we work with, so make sure you check off the portfolio items and press publish. And now we can see that uh, if we refresh this, that three portfolio items are on here. But we haven't pasted any of the dummy text in there, so we can go ahead and do that by going back to our dashboard, click portfolio, and just click on any of these and copy that dummy text. All right, so I'm going to speed up this video, but I'm gonna do this a whole bunch more times. I'm sure you've gotten the hang of it by now. We've done uh, three. So I'm just gonna uh, speed it up real quick and you will then, uh, then I'll see you on the other side. All right, so that successfully uh, completes our portfolio. Um, so if we go back to our, our work and testimonials and click refresh, we see all of these uh, portfolio items. And when we click on testimonials, uh, only the testimonials show up, and who we work with, only who we work with has uh, shown up. So I think we actually missed a testimonials. We didn't categorize it correctly. So what we can do if we do that is we can go to portfolio categories. I'm sorry, portfolio. And we can see the different categories these are in. And... Um, we accidentally categorized one of them as uh, who we worked with when it really should have been testimonials. So 
I'm going to figure out which one that is. Oh, Kathy shouldn't be who we work with. That should be under testimonial. So I'm going to click quick edit and just move that to testimonials and click update. All right, so now we can go back and refresh and click on testimonials and see that there are three in there and who we work with, there's a whole bunch. And we can click on any of these and uh, we can flip through these and it looks really, really, really good. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to set up a blog now that that's done. So what we wanna do is we wanna click on Bob Stories and we wanna edit page and under template, instead of default template, we're gonna change it to blog and then click update. So that's all you need to do for uh, this page to turn it into a blog. Now we can view our page and we can see the default blog post right there. So what we can do with that is we can delete that because we don't want it there. So we can go back to our dashboard and we can go to uh, posts because this is where you make blog posts and see the hello world and click trash. So now that will be gone from all of your uh, blog post. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new blog post. So we're going to add new. And uh, this blog post is going to be called Working with Steinway and Sons. Because that's a pretty interesting thing to do. Um, and then we're just going to copy in again some dummy content. It doesn't really say anything. Um, and we're going to set a featured image once again. So set featured image, upload files, select files, uh, Steinway, and press open. Then click set featured image and click publish. So now when we go under, uh, visit our website and go to Bob Stories, we can see uh, this new blog post and we can click on it to read more. So that's a pretty good way of getting traffic to your website by providing really interesting stories or really good content. So we're gonna add another blog post. We could just go to new post right here. It's a shortcut and paste in some dummy content again and this one's gonna be called working with Elton and again we're gonna set the featured image by uploading files select files and working with Elton I'm gonna open it up and set the featured image alright so we're gonna publish that and then we're going to view our website again. And now we have under Bob Stories, we have two different posts. So that's pretty cool. We have Working with Elton and Working with Steinways and Sons, which is pretty cool. So we, once we click on that, it'll take us to the full blog post, just like on any news site like CNN or Forbes or uh, TechCrunch or anything like that. So that completes the blog. So let's get started on the home page. So if we go to the home page, you'll notice that the home page is actually the blog and we need to change that. What I want is for a bunch of the our work and testimonials, the little portfolio to be on the home page. And I also want a big picture of Bob working on a piano that kind of welcomes people to this website. So let's do that now. Let's go over to the uh, dashboard let's add that big image to the home page so to do that I'm gonna to go to appearance theme options and hit the home tab right here and then under slide one I'm gonna click this arrow and I'm going to upload a picture so I'm gonna select these files 
and click the file that I want to use on the home page. And I am going to set it to full size if it's already not and click use this image. All right. Uh, after that, I want to make it this image a link so when you click on it, it's going to bring you to the Our Work and Testimonials page. So I'm going to open up this page and copy the URL up here in the URL bar. I'm just going to highlight it, click copy, and paste it right here where it says link. And uh, that should do it for the slide, so I'm going to save that and see how it looks. So let's open up our home page. Now we should have a big picture of Bob right here. And then what I want to do is uh, change a couple more settings, which is the portfolio items count. I only want six to show up on the home page. And if you want to see more, you can either click the link in the menu or uh, click this image right here. All right, so let's save that. And uh, you'll notice, make sure that's saved, you'll notice that uh, nothing else has changed on the home page. We only have this image, but it's still the blog down here. We don't have any of the portfolio items. So what we have to do is make a home page. So to do that, we go to Pages, Add New, and I'm going to set it to Home. And I am going to set the template to uh, Portfolio Ajax. So set it like that and click Publish. And still we won't have any changes just yet. What we have to do is go into our settings right here, go into Reading. And then we have to select which page we want as the home page. So it's going to be a static page. Then we're going to set the front page to the home page that we just created. And the post page is going to be Bob's stories. All right. So now if we save and refresh our website, we should have a pretty nice uh, portfolio on our home page. And actually, I did this a little wrong. Uh, let's go back into Pages. And what you will actually want to do is, instead of setting this to Portfolio Ajax, just set it to Home Page. Click Update and Refresh. And now we'll just have the six um, portfolio items that we want to show, not like all 12 of them or however many there were. All right, so we can hit these buttons and it'll work on our home page. Um, and uh, that completes the home page. So let's move on to the contact page. So the contact page is going to have a map over here on the right hand side showing Bob's service area. And then it's going to have uh, some contact information like his phone number and address and whatnot. And then it's going to have a contact form right here um, in the middle. So let's add a contact form right now and we have to get a plugin to actually do that. So let's go to the plugin section, click add new. And the most popular contact form for WordPress is called contact form seven. So just type that in, click search and click install now. Click OK. And once it's done installing, make sure to activate it. And then over on the left hand side, you'll notice a new tab that says Contact. Click that. And click Edit under Contact Form 1. Then what you want to do is just copy this short code right there. Just highlight it. Click Copy. And make sure that this is the email that you want to receive the emails that people send you. And uh, I don't know Bob's email right off the bat, so I will change that later for him. So I'll just leave that to mine. And I'm going to click Save. So from there, let's go to our contact page. That's Pages, Contact. 
and let's paste in what we just copied, which is that short code. And the first thing that I know I want to do is get rid of the comments on the contact page. So I'm going to make sure that discussion is checked off. Scroll down to the bottom, uncheck allow comments, and uncheck allow talk trackbacks. And then I am going to click update. So we can test that out. Let's go to the contact page, and we'll have a nice contact form right there. The next thing I want to do is add a little box with a a bunch of Bob's contact information. So let's do that by first getting a new plugin. So make sure that this is saved by clicking update. And let's head over to the plugins area, add new. And then let's type in standout um, boxes. So we type in standout boxes. We should get this one called standout color boxes and buttons. Install now activate and this plugin will give us some styling options for the box that we want to wrap around our contact information so let's go back to the contact page now make sure you have activated the plugin if it's not activated just hit activate right here and let's go to the contact page so edit that and I want the box of contact information to be right above the contact form so I'm just gonna hit enter right like that and then what I'm gonna do is type in some short code so once you've installed that plugin just type in color dash box um, color equals gray and there's a bunch of different options for colors you can type in almost any color then I'm going to type in some contact information. So I'm just going to type in uh, address and I'll paste this in like so and backspace that. Then I'm going to type in some cell information and I am going to type in the business line. paste that in and I'm going to make this bold then I'm going to close off this uh, color box short code by going below our contact information and typing a bracket a uh, forward slash and then typing in color dash box so this is going to be the color box. You'll see the first color box tag and the second and everything inside is going to be in the box. So let's test that out by updating it and going to our contact page. And that did not work for some reason. So let's edit our page. And I spelled gray wrong. So I'm just going to change that E to an A and click update and let's refresh so now that looks pretty good um, maybe we can get a little less space in between refresh that and let's do the same for the top <coughs> and let's update that all right so now we have a nice tidy box right here. The next thing I want to do is add a menu or excuse me, add a map to the right side that says service area at the top and uh, shows Bob's service area. So let's do that by going over to Google Maps. That's maps.google.com and let's type in uh, Calgary. Alberta. So 
So what we want to do is embed this map into our website. So let's do that by hitting this link right here and clicking Customize and Preview Embedded Map. Then we want to have a custom map size. So I'm going to hit Custom. And the map size for me is going to be 700, excuse me, 250 by 700. So it's going to be nice and tall. And we can move it around like this. Then what we want to do is just copy this uh, code right down here. So if we just click inside this box and right click, we can click select all and then right click again. Oops. What we want to do is right click, select all, and then hit command or control C. So that will select everything and control C or command C will copy it. Then we can close up Google Maps and let's go to the appearance widgets section. So we want to add a map widget on the right side of our contact page. But the first step is getting rid of all these other widgets right here that say categories, archives, recent comments, blah, blah, blah. So let's just get rid of those by dragging those out like this. Um, and these are the available widgets and these are the active widgets. So let's drag a text widget right here and let's call it service area. Then I'm just going to paste in the code that I just copied and it looks like a bunch of gibberish but if we save it and refresh our website it'll be a nice map widget that shows Bob's um, location. There's one last step. I want to add a little text right here that says call us or fill out, fill out the email below for a quote to ask more questions. Uh, so let's go to pages, contact, and I'm just going to make a line right here. It's going to say call us or fill out the email form below for a quote or to ask more questions about our services. All right, let's update that. Let's refresh that. And that looks great. The very last finishing touch is to change the logo up here. So I have a custom logo that Bob requested we use, so I'm just going to use that. But if you don't have a logo, you can check out Fiverr.com, and I'll leave a link in the description to the site where you can get a logo made for $5. Just go to Fiverr, go to Graphics and Design, look around, see if you like any people under Logo Design. And there's a lot of good people. I've gotten a lot of work from these people. And if you like anything, just uh, sign in or sign up and you can get a logo for $5. So that's pretty cool. The other alternative is to watch my video on how to create a custom logo by yourself. Um, you can find that in my channel. So once you have your logo, you're going to want to go to Appearance, Theme Options, and go to General. Then under Main Logo Upload, just click Upload, Select Files, and Upload Your Logo. So mine's called Logo.jpg. I'm going to open that up. And I am going to click Use This Image. So let's save that, and let's refresh our page. Now we have a nice logo. Um, and there's actually one more thing, which is right here you will notice it says edit your title in the theme settings panel so we can change this title right now by going to the theme settings and finding maybe under blog and maybe we'll just say uh, welcome to Bob Moffitt's blog alright so let's save that and refresh and that looks pretty great so now we have everything we have a nice home page with this big image a nice uh, 
portfolio with all of uh, Bob's work. And if you want to see more, you can click this image and see more. You can click these and they'll open up like that. We have a nice contact page. And we have an about me and a services page. So that completes this tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe, rate, and comment. And thanks for watching.